Melvin, as you probably already know, so you might have heard some uh, talk surrounding this particular, particular stand-up routine. Uh, so I got kicked out of Madhouse, so hopefully that controversy has sparked your interest in this. But uh, just keep in mind that I'm giving you the uncensored uh, CD bar edition, if you will, so just remember, I wasn't this offensive when I originally did this. Alright, so just starting things off, I'm, not gonna, I'm just going to get this out of the way, I'm not going to promise anything great. Not gonna say I'm gonna be the next Dane Cook or anything, but I'll promise one thing, and that's that I'll be better than Megan Ryan was at this year's talent show. So, uh, without further ado, let's get rolling. Alright, uh, audience interaction time. Uh, if you had Mr. Patel for 7th grade English, give me a hell yeah! Hell yeah! 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 <laughs> I was expecting a little bit more, but, uh, for those of you who, uh, didn't have, uh, Mr. Patel, as I said before, he was an English teacher. But he was, a, he was a manly man. Uh, he was muscular, very burly, most definitely on steroids. But uh, he was also a cruel man along with uh, his manliness. One particular thing he did was uh, oftentimes, uh, as I had his class in the morning, he'd always eat donuts because he could never seem time, to have time to uh, eat his breakfast before class. And every single time he ate his donuts, he always just seemed to drift over to a particular student's desk. As he'd be talking about Edgar Allan Poe, he'd be eating these donuts dripping with frosting and Bavarian cream. And he would, the crumbs would just be falling on this kid's desk. He'd be like, well, on the, on the pendulum, and then this fat kid. <laughs> Skip. Uh, <laughs> so then this kid would just be sitting on this, uh, the fat kid would just be at his desk going. <laughs> that was more like Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> Hello, Clarice. <laughs> So, uh, Mr. Butel was, he was a cruel guy. He ate donuts in front of fat kids. I mean, who does that? Share some with them. But, uh, so he was quite manly, but he was an English teacher after all, so he always had to reassure us of his manliness. Because he's always like, you know, tough guys like English too. Poems. <laughs> Tupac wrote poetry. Let's read some Tupac in the poetry unit, eh? You like that, Des fan? Call out to you, Des fan, if you're watching this video. Probably not. But, um, so, he all, he'd always reassure us of his manliness during class. He'd be like, yeah, so, last night I was bench pressing a, a quarter pounder with cheese. Obviously, I don't know very much about weightlifting, but, uh, or during the poetry unit, he was like, yeah, when I was in college, this, this one guy came up to me. He's like, you know, I think poetry's for sissies. And Mr. Butel said, you know what, you know what happened to that guy? I killed him. And then the entire class just goes, oh! Oh my god, Mr. Patel killed that guy. Jeez. I'm gonna turn my haiku on and in on time. Oh my god. So, uh, as I said, he was a manly, he was as manly as he could be in the world of phys physicality, but he wanted to be as manly as he could in the world of English. So, uh, Mr. Patel took it upon himself to do the most manly thing in English. So, Mr. Patel decided to read the dictionary. Now, I don't know why would, one would want to read the dictionary. Frankly, I'm just gonna wait for the movie to come out. Because you know there's going to be one, I mean, they just made a movie off of a 10-page children's book with little to no story value. Yeah, where the wild, wild, where the wild things are. But, uh, you know, there may be some non-believers out there, they just think I'm up here chatting bullshit. But, uh, to, to you non-believers, <laughs> there, there is a dictionary movie. Well, it's currently in, it's been halted in production due to a lawsuit of Samuel L. Jackson being cast as the leader of all the N-words. So, uh, moving on. So, going off the dictionary movie idea, uh, I love movies. Uh, I love to watch them, critique them, discuss them. But there's one thing I cannot stand about movies, and that's watching them with my parents. I don't know if uh, any of you guys can relate. Oh, parents! Oh, school, home, homework, the man, the government. Oh, I hate my parents. Parents are the worst. So, uh... One of the reasons I don't like to watch movies with my parents is my mom, uh, she loves to read subtitles of anything. No matter how insignificant, no matter how obvious, no matter that you can actually read the things yourself and you don't need to read them, for, for, read them to you, she'll read them to you. Like, 1798, Riverdale High School, Archie and the gang decide to set out an adventure. Or, a long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away. Yeah, uh, thanks, Mom. I mean, don't even get into watching a foreign film with her with all those subtitles. It's ridiculous. But, uh, this, uh, as much as I hate it, 
And as much as I find it annoying, I find myself doing it to my friends. We'll be watching a movie and I'll be like, 1498, Scotland, William Wallace is born. And my friends will be like, dude, what the hell are you doing? And I'll just be like, oh, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what happened. And it just, just popped up. I'll be like, dude, we're trying to watch Braveheart. It's like Mrs. Pierce's favorite movie. <laughs> Mel Gibson's a god in it. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, it won't happen again. I do like I do like uh, Mel Gibson and Braveheart mostly because he ends all his sentences with "without freedom." I like to have a family and a little fam, but you can't do that without freedom. That's that my Mel Gibson. Take it or leave it. But uh, the whole uh, the reading of subtitles during the movie reminds me of a story from my childhood. Uh, one time uh, we got Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade from the library because we were too cheap to rent it at Blockbuster. But this I had never seen this movie before, and I'd been waiting years to see this. The Return of Nazis, Sean Connery playing Indiana Jones' father. It was destined to be good. So I brought it home, we popped it in the, the VCR, and I was just, oh, this is going to be good, I'm so excited. And, and then uh, the movie, the credits roll down, and it starts. And it shows young Indiana Jones because of the whole flashback sequence. And we're watching this, and all of a sudden I hear, Young Indiana Jones cautiously walks down the tunnel, and around the corner he spies grave robbers. And I turn to my mom like, Mom, what's, what's going on? And my mom's like, oh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't remember this movie very well. I think it, this could have been in it originally. I just don't remember. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So we keep watching, and it keep ha keeps happening. Young Indiana Jones hops onto a train and fights a lion with a chair and a baseball cap. And I was like, whoa, Mom, okay, this is enough. Enough is enough. So I, I go over and pop out the VCR, and sure enough, it says... Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade for the hearing, for the visually impaired. And, uh, judging by this uh, one experience, nobody must want to watch movies with blind people. You'll be watching Sixth Sense for the visually impaired in 30 minutes in the movie. Bruce Willis' character was dead the entire time. Oh, God! <laughs> Damn it! Oh, come on! I just ruined that movie for somebody out there. Sorry. But uh, another thing, uh, this is something my bo both of my parents do that I don't like watching movies with them, is uh, what I like to call the interested grunt. I know you might be wondering, what's, what's the interested grunt? Well, I'll tell you what the interested grunt is. The interesting grunt usually comes at the end of historical movies, movies about history, if you will, and it sums everything up, you know, gives a little statistic, you know, something very obvious, and you'd be like, 12 million people died in the Holocaust. And I don't know if that's accurate or not, so I don't mean to piss off any Jews out there. Sorry, respect. But, uh, so, you know, it might just come, like, at the end of the Sandlot, you know, all of the kids, you know, sum up, you find out what they do. Like, Billy Bob started a shoe company. And then my parents will go, <clears throat> as they need to reassure you that they're intrigued by what just came up. And it says that at the end of the Sandlot, you find out what every single person did. It's just one after another. <clears throat> <clears throat> It gets to the point where it's like watching a movie with Master Yoda. Mm, very interesting! So, uh, as I said before, uh, I love movies, moving along with that, but one, one specific genre of movie I like very much is the spy action movies. Specifically, I love the evil geniuses in these. You know, you gotta love them, you know, always trying to destroy the world, always petting their cat. I never quite understood that, uh, is that supposed to be scary, you know, their little feline friend there? <laughs> That was my impression of a cat sounding more like a lawnmower. Sorry. But, uh, you know, with the cat butt, you know, isn't it better when they're in a wheelchair? It's like, are you intimidated by my hover around? <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty good impression of a hover around. I watch a lot of The Price is Right. Those commercials come up all the time. Here's another one for you. <laughs> if you have diabetes. That was a pretty good impression of an overweight cowboy with a bushy mustache. But uh, my, my favorite part of the, the, the evil geniuses is what I like, what I like to call uh, the all-knowing clap. Now you might be wondering, what's the all-knowing clap? I just got used to the interested grunt. What's this other adjective followed by a verb? Well, I'll tell you what the all-knowing clap is. The all-knowing clap comes at the point where the, the hero finds out the villain's, the villain's plan, but he's like, you know what? I don't care. And then he just does this. He goes... Bravo! You found out my plan, but now what are you going to do about it? Now, I specifically, uh, I specifically love this because I always have fantasized about being the evil genius. So I'd always want to draw in 
the all-knowing clap and use it in everyday life. You know, it's to me like the term agree to disagree. I've never been able to use it correctly, but I've always wanted to use it. And so, you know, I'll just throw it in randomly, like, whenever I'd say agree normally. Oh, we're going to go to Subway after school, right? Agree to disagree. It never works out quite right, but I've always wanted to use it. So, you know, I'd like to use the all-knowing clap throughout the day as, you know, just be like, Oh, bravo, you got an A on your test. Jolly good show. I don't know why I talked like I was British in that situation, but, or... Oh, that was a simply magnificent aria. I absolutely love the opera. Or, I just learned how to turn on my clapper. Clap, my lights with the clapper. Clap on. <laughs> Clap off. Now, uh, I have a feeling that most of you, as my audience here, uh, didn't find that joke quite funny. So, uh, you know, this is a little tip for me to you, free of charge. I mean, you didn't need to pay to see this show, now did you? But, uh... Whenever you tell a joke that you expect to be funny, you expect uproarious laughter, and none come, you know, just do this, you know, just spread your arms, and then say your name, as given here. I'm Lucas Melvin! <laughs> now, now I'll show it to you again. So, clap on, clap off. I'm Lucas Melvin! Works every time. Throw that out at some parties. So, uh, some of my favorite movies are Disney movies. You like that transition? But however, I do not like to watch Disney movies with other people. You know, it, to me it's like a guilty pleasure. I, I have to be alone. So whenever I want to watch a Disney movie, it's like I'm about to watch porn or something. I'm sneaking around. It's like the Mormons at your house, you know, you're doing the army crawl. You're looking through the window. Oh, why are they here? What is going on? You peek around the corner. Why is my dad watching PBS? I want to watch Mulan. Oh, God. Oh. Damn it! Ah! But, uh, so yeah, I have to sneak around and be careful, but, uh, so one night, I was up in my room around 9 o'clock, and I was like, you know what? I need to get off my bed and watch The Little Mermaid. <laughs> so, uh, I sneak downstairs, check if the coast is clear. It's not only clear, but, uh, nobody's in the house. So, uh, you know, I pop in The Little Mermaid, and I just sit down, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, this is good. Ah, oh. you see that? You see that mermaid? She only got shells on. She doesn't even got any clothes. That's pretty hot. Twenty minutes in, all hell breaks loose. My dad rolls in. My brother rolls in. His girlfriend's with him, and of course, they have nothing better to do than watch the Little Mermaid with me. So they walk in, and I'm just standing there, and the sweat's just pouring down my face. And I'm just like, oh, what are they gonna think? They gonna think positive. We had a uh, brief uh, technical difficulties there. Pizza guy arrived, so uh, we didn't want him in the show, right? So, uh, mid thought, oh, jeez! Oh, oh, what are they gonna think of me? Oh, jeez, they're gonna think I'm weird. They're like, why is he watching The Little Mermaid? Oh, God, what a sicko! There's something wrong with him! He's like 16 years old and he's watching that. That's a kid's movie! God! And then another thought entered my head, I'm just like, well, looks like I'm not gonna sing along to a part of your world. Sorry, Laura May. <laughs> so this next bit is, it's random, but it's related to movies. Uh, so, uh, sometime... Take it easy, you guys. That part was originally cut, so I didn't say that in the original show. So, uh, something funny about, uh, related to movies, uh, sometime get, uh, Brokeback Mountain or Milk or Bruno or something like that. And watch it with somebody who's really serious. You know, they're like, oh, this is really good cinematic, like, quality. It's a good movie. And then just like, good ways through the movie, just turn to him and go, You know what? This is really gay. That's what my brother Brody did uh, when we were watching Milk. He just sat through there the entire time. Oh, this is gay! <laughs> Faggot! Homo! Oh, this is so gay! And my mom's just like, Brody! Brody, you don't understand. You don't understand what this movie's about. And I'm like, Mom, I don't know what you're watching. All I'm getting out of this is the Hobgoblin making out with Sean Penn for a half an hour. Another thing you can do, uh, and I apologize for this in advance, but uh, go to the Special Olympics and uh, turn to the person sitting next to you and go, Wow, this is really retarded. 
Again, I, I apologize for that. Now this next part, this is truly random and uh, also slightly out of date, but I've always thought, wouldn't it be fun if, you, uh, if somebody gave Kanye West a time machine? How many historical events could he ruin? Let's find out. Time travel, time travel, time travel. Because, you, know, uh, you know, Kanye West would time travel with a hand gesture. Four score and seven years ago, our country's forefathers. Whoa, 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 whoa! Mr. Abe Lincoln, honest Abe, Abe to the ding, the love of Lincoln! Whoa, hold on for a second! The Confederates didn't just have one of the best armies of the 1800s. They had the best army of all time! Spoiler alert, you get shot in the head. Time travel, time travel, time travel! My parents would be watching that movie and they'd be like, I didn't realize that they had microphones back then. What was Abraham Lincoln to? What was he talking into? <laughs> time travel, time travel, time travel. I have a dream that one day. Whoa, 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 hold on, Martin Luther King! MLK, Martin Luther King Jr. Hold on a second! I did not just have an alright dream last night. I didn't I did not just have a good dream last night. I had the best dream of all time last night! You wanna know what happened in my dream? I'll tell you what happened in my dream. I was just walking around, I saw cartoony and stuff, I'm like, what? And there's Popeye, Popeye said, I was like, dude, dude, I'm like, what is going on? And there's like, blues, I was riding a bus, and some girl broke up with me, and that girl who broke up with me was totally heartless. For those of you who do not know, uh, that was a description of the Kanye West music video, Heartless. I had to do my research on that one. Not a big Kanye fan, I have to say. I had to sit through that video, it was quite hard. Time travel, time travel, time travel. Now, uh, now here's the finale. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm, uh, as you know, your principal, Brian Gersich, and I have the great honor to introduce to you the head football coach of Manquite KO West football team, Mr. Markesh. Mr. Markesh, everybody. <laughs> Go ahead, give it up for Markesh. There's one thing you know for sure it's that Manquite West plays good football! Yeah! Any given Sunday! God, I rip. Oh. You want to feel my bicep? Come on, come here. Come up here. Feel my bicep. What? Hold on. Wait. I need to focus. I need to focus. If we are to win this game, we must beat with one heart. We must breathe with one lung. We must see with one eye. And we must eat with one lung. With one mouth. <laughs> but above... Now, uh... Don't mind if I do some lunges. Ah, uh, ah, uh, feel the burn. Ah, uh, uh. we must win this game. But above all else, the ring must be destroyed. We must take it to Mordor and throw it into the fires of Mount Doom from whence it came. Now stand with me, men of the West. Can you dig it? Excuse me. Whoa, 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 Mr. Markesh, Mr. Markesh, MC Escher, Esther Sketch, Cinderella Man, hold on for a second! First of all, this picture's way too epic for the stuff you're describing. And second of all, Totino Grayson just had one of the best football teams of the year. They had the best football team of all time! Thank you. That's all I have, but except for this one last bit. Oh my god! <laughs> That's all I got.